Bis Clavray by Marie de France. Adapted and performed by the Liverpool players. Whoever has the gifts of knowledge and eloquence should never hide them. Talent is like a seed, tiny and unnoticed beneath the dark soil. Yet, when it is nurtured and revealed, the seed grows, and when touched by the warm glow of the sun, it blooms into a magnificent flower. Many stories have been passed down through generations, but many do not survive. That is why I, Marie de France, Wish to tell you a tale so that its light may never fade. Listen now to a tale that the Breton people call Bisclare and the Normans Gawaf. Long ago, in days of old, stories tell us of a mysterious force that bound some men to their animal state. These werewolves, or garwolves as the Normans call them, lived alone in woods and forests, away from civilization. Savage evil beasts. They preyed on men and did no good. But let us leave these stories. We need not be frightened of them. And I wish to tell you of Bisclare. Bisclare was a great, handsome knight who served his king well and was loved by all. His wife was a worthy and beautiful woman. He loved her and she returned his love. But every week, he was absent for three full days, and she knew not where he went or what became of him. This troubled her greatly. One day, when he had returned home in high spirits, she questioned him. My dear sweet love, I would ask you something, if only I dared. But I fear your anger. Lady, there is nothing you can ask which I shall not tell you, if I know the answer. I am relieved to hear this. My lord, when you are apart from me, I am so worried. My heart is so heavy, and I have such a fear of losing you that I shall surely die unless you help. Please, tell me where you go, what becomes of you, and where you stay. I think you must have a lover, and if this is so, you wronged me. Lady, in God's name, have mercy on me. <sighs> if I tell you this... Great harm will come to me, for I shall lose your love and destroy myself. Lord! My love, you cannot keep such a thing from me. I must. But I am your wife. Lady, I become... I... I become a werewolf. I go to the forest and live in the deepest part of the wood where I feed off the prey I can capture. I run and I run and I hunt for three whole days. Do you undress or do you do this clothed? Lady, I go about completely naked. Tell me, in the name of God, where do you leave your clothes? That I cannot tell you, for if I lost them and were discovered in that state, I should remain a werewolf forever. No one would be able to help me until my clothes were returned. My lord, I love you more than the whole world. You must not hide anything from me, or doubt me in any way. Tell me, you will be acting wisely. But... Please! Beside the wood, near the path I follow, stands an old chapel that often serves me well. There, beneath the bush, is a broadstone hollowed out in the centre, where I leave my clothes until I return home. When the lady heard this remarkable revelation, her face flushed with fear. She was greatly alarmed by Bisclare's story and began to consider how to leave her husband if she no longer wished to be with him. The unfaithful lady wrote to a knight who had loved and wooed her unsuccessfully for many years. He longed to serve her, though she had never returned his devotion. Her letter requested a secret meeting. My lady, 
How may I serve you? My love, I am afraid for my life. My husband is a monster and means me great harm. Fear not, my lady, for none shall harm you while I am here. Then you must do all you can to rid me of my husband, and I will be yours. The unfaithful wife revealed her plan to her knight. She schemed to trap her noble lord within his beastly form. The knight would wait until Bisclare took his werewolf form, and then, before he could return, steal his clothes and trap him in his wolf state forever. And so it was, the next time he left to spend three days hunting as a beast, his disloyal wife sent her knight into the forest, to the bush and the broad stone by the chapel, to take her lord's clothes. Thus was noble Bisclare betrayed. Bisclare's people were so used to him disappearing, that when he did not return, they waited many days before looking for him. A long time passed, and still, Nothing was heard from their good lord, so the court presumed he had gone forever. The scheming wife was free to marry her lover, and Bisclare wandered the forests alone, imprisoned in his beastly form. A whole year passed by, until one day the king went hunting in the forest where Bisclare roamed. From a distance he spied a strange beast, and began a chase that lasted many hours. Keep up the chase, man. We've always caught him. What a thrilling hunt this is. Lords, come forward. See the marvellous way this beast humbles itself before me. It has the intelligence of a human and is pleading for mercy. I forbid you to strike it. The beast possesses understanding and intelligence. I place this creature under my protection. We shall hunt no more today. Let us depart. Bisclare was taken to the king's castle, where the king decreed that he should be well fed and that no one should strike him. The beast became the king's constant companion, never leaving his side, even at night, when he slept close beside the king's royal chamber. He was gentle and well-mannered, and the whole court cared for him. Now hear what happened next. Soon, the king held a great feast, and all the lords and ladies of the kingdom came to celebrate his reign and bring him gifts. Among them, was the knight who had stolen Bisclare's clothes and married his faithless lady. He did not expect Bisclare to be so close by. Stop! Stop this at once! This is not like you at all. Stop. My sincerest apologies, dear knight. The creature has never acted in such a way before. The courtiers were greatly astonished at the creature's behaviour and remarked that he would not have done such a thing without good reason. They believed the knight had wronged him somehow. But soon the mood grew merry again as more guests arrived and the festivities continued. Then arrived Bisclare's lady, bringing a gift for the king. My lord, it is an honour. Upon seeing the wife who had betrayed him so painfully, all of Bisclare's rage returned. This time, no one could restrain him. He dashed towards her like a madman. See how successfully he took his revenge. He tore the nose right off her face. I thought you were a noble creature, but this violence is unforgivable. I must protect my people. I am sorry. Dear friend. My lord, please stop for a moment and listen. I have watched these events unfold. This creature has lived with you peacefully for a long time. Nobody in this room has ever seen him behave monstrously before. By the faith I owe you, 
I believe he has some grudge against her and her new husband. She is the wife of the loyal knight Bisclavre, who has been missing for a long time. I suggest you question the lady, make her tell you what she knows about his disappearance. These are wise words. Well? I know nothing. I know nothing! You must know something, my lady, and you must confess to your king. I wish to see this mystery solved. I beg you, my lord, have mercy. I know nothing. Then you shall rot in the dungeons until you speak. No! Very well. I confess. I betrayed my first husband. I discovered that he transforms into a werewolf and hides his clothing in the woods, for without them he can never revert to his human form. I was terrified. He is a monster. So I persuaded my lover to steal his clothes, promising to marry him in return. The wolf before me is my first husband, Bisclavray. Have mercy on a poor woman, my lord. A being such as you deserves no mercy. I command you to fetch the clothes you disloyally took. My lord, I believe he would like some <clears throat> privacy to change. It is very improper to do so before an audience. <clears throat> yes, quite right. Everyone, a virtual gaze. My lord, it is I, your faithful knight, Bisclavre. Hooray! Hooray! And so it was that the truth was revealed. Bisclavre returned to his human form, and the king reunited with his greatest friend and kissed him. Again and again. The disloyal wife was banished from the kingdom, and her lover knight banished with her. But her punishment did not end there. For her wickedness, the lady was cursed, and many of her female descendants were born without noses. Everyone was overjoyed at Bisclare's return. His lands were restored to him, and his adventure recorded for future generations. Dear audience, do not doubt the story we have told you today, and do not forget it. Give it new life in retelling it yourselves, and help it live on for many more years to come. Beef Clavre by the Liverpool Players was adapted from Glyn Burgess' translation by Connor Brown, Olivia Colquitt, Kim Nichols and Joe Ramsden. The cast was Madeleine Smart as Marie de France, Cameron Steen as Beef Clavre, Mary Jane Cooper as the Lady, Alex Cottrell as the Knight, George Trier as the King, and Olivia Colquitt as the Wise Courtier. The music and editing was by Alex Cottrell. For updates on future productions, you can follow the Liverpool Players on Twitter using at LiveUniPlayers. Players.